So this was a synthesis problem from the 2015 exam three. And it's very fair game for what you could expect on your exam because it basically just brings all those reactions I talked about in the last video together. Our goal is to turn this sugar into this, uh, this ring covered in OCH3 and O-ethyl groups. So the first thing to do is approach this from the perspective of what kind of reactions do I need to use and what changed? Well, I see that this OH over here became an OCH3. And we know the reaction, we, the only reactions that, gets car, that uh, get carbons onto these oxygens that aren't your anomeric OHs are CH3I, or some carbon group on an iodine, a good leaving group. So I know I have to use that reaction at some point to get that OCH3 group onto that OH. And the same deal with these two O's. I need to use an ETI, which is just two carbons and then the iodine. And I need to make it so only these oxygens can react with this, and only this oxygen can react with the CH3I. Finally, I, they made the OH a squiggly line, which means that OH could be up or down, and there's going to be both. And we know that that will happen whenever we treat this with just H0 positive. But that makes sense also because we know either of these two reactions would replace that OH with the OCH3 or the OET, and we want it to be an OH, so we'd have to use H3O positive anyway. So that would cause the two possible stereochemical configurations. So let's start by thinking about which of these should I use first? Because if I use ETI the, and add these two on, this would end up getting that carbon chain as well. But we want it to be just a methyl. And vice versa, if I use the CH3I first, I'd get this, but then these would be OCH3s as well. And we have no way of un removing those methyls. What we need to do is make it so these two OHs don't get in the way of this one's reaction. And what you have to do for this, then, is use a protecting group. Because these two, if you notice, these two OHs are pointing in the same direction. They're both pointing down. Which means you can protect them by using your hemiacetal, your, rather, your acetal protecting group, or your orgo beast, as it's also known. So in your first step, you want to do this. That will put a protecting group onto these two OHs, so only this and this are available to react. This one will be cut, you can use the uh, CH3I to make it into the OCH3, and this will become an OCH3 as well, but that's easily changeable. We can easily change that back into an OH at the end with H3O positive. So if this is your first step, all that you're doing is protecting those two bottom OHs. So now we have O, O, and now we have our orgo beast. And then the rest of the ring is exactly the same because none of that reacts with the protecting group. Now I'm free to react with either of these two OHs, so let's focus on this one. And I'm going to use CH3I because I wanted to make it an OCH3. And so that will react with both of these oxygens and you'll end up getting CH3. These oxygens, because they're protected, do not react and just stay part of the orgo beast. And then this one becomes an OC, or I'll keep this pointing up, an OCH3. Now our goal is to now work on these two, but to get these available I have to remove the protecting group, so I'm going to use H3O positive to remove that protecting group. Just don't forget, H3O positive will also turn this back into an OH. And when it does that, you're going to get your squiggly line OH. Because this can, that OH can come in from the front or the back. And so now you have your five-membered ring. You have the squiggly line OH. You have two downward pointing OHs on the bottom and the OCH3 that we added in that last step. And again, H3O positive can't remove that. So it's stuck being OCH3 for the rest of the synthesis. Now we can bring in the other group, the other carbon chain with a leaving group. We want two carbons, so I'm going to add one, two, and then iodine. Now, if you look at the answer key in some old, and some old exams as well, you'll often see that this is step two and step one 
is NaH for some good base. And now, going through your lecture notes, I saw that he taught it where it's just um, carbon chain with a leaving group in excess. But all that NaH does is it's a good base, which means it will deprotonate those OHs, make them O minuses, and then the same thing happens. You have a better nucleophile than just an OH, so it's definitely going to come in and attack there. But either way, the net result is the same. All of these OHs are going to be replaced, well, not replaced, but rather than be OH, they will now be O and whatever this carbon chain is. So now I have oxygen, I have this, still a squiggly line, O with two carbons on it, and then each of these oxygens have two carbons, and then the carbon we worked on, or the oxygen we worked on at the very, at the very start is an OCH3. So all you have left to do now is to turn this O-ethyl group back into an OH, and all you have to do for that is another round of H0 positive. So that's a pretty fair game kind of synthesis problem you could get for the sugars chapter, or the carbohydrates chapter.